do it. Hello, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Mac City Morning Show. I am your host, Elliot Pierre, and we're going to start the show off the same way we start every show off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, so the fact that you're spending with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How's she caught me, loves? You're listening to the Mac City Morning Show. All right, and we're back. Okay, this guest is going to be a lot of fun today because I didn't know it was happening. I booked it, but then it mysteriously wasn't in my calendar. So as everybody knows at home, I do not introduce my guests. I let them do that themselves. So on that note, sir, please uh, tell everybody who you are and what you're about. I'm back again. My name is Mark Zebro, and I'm glad to be here, honestly. There we what go. Nice, man. Day. Mark, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming and hanging out. We yeah. had a good little chat uh, at the golf course Absolutely. Uh, a few weeks ago. The episode aired, I think, last week. Yeah, just did in the start of August there. Yeah, did pretty well. Yeah, you know, I saw a lot of people across this, like, Ole to Ontario yeah. uh, in Manitoba. People I used to, like, hang out with for yeah. junior hockey and all my billets across the country. Like, they saw it. They shared it. They yeah. shared it with my old GMs, other people in town. Like, the yeah. community was like... Wow, that's cool what they're doing up there. Yeah. So they enjoy your guys' show, that's and awesome, thanks for man. having me on again. Yeah, no, and uh, thank you for coming, and we definitely wanted you to come and hang out in uh, the set, the living room, the office. It's a pretty awesome cool environment. Here. So right before you were talking, and we, we right before we were filming, you and I were talking, and I'm like, what are we doing? we got to get this on camera. So you were going for a walk in the Birchwood Trails yesterday. Absolutely gorgeous there. Yeah. So tell yeah. us about that, because Tanner, for one, doesn't know what they're about. <laughs> So I know what they're about. I'm just, I don't know, not phased by them as much as you, I guess. Yeah. So tell everybody like Tanner at home who's not amazed or phased by the Birchwood Trails what they're about. They're amazing, obviously, like we we're yeah. talking about. But honestly, coming from somewhere else where you go to travel to Banff or Jasper or Canmore to go hiking and to come here and just to go to some nice trails, some steep trails too, you know, and it's nice. The first time I ever visited them. Yeah. Visited them. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was a while ago. So this is the second time I've been there. Okay. The first time I went there, because it's just off the school there. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was going to be a roundabout. Like right. you'd go in them. Yeah. And then somehow you'd make your way back. That's right. But my girlfriend and I went in there and 45 minutes in, we're like realized, no, these are bigger than I thought. Yeah, yeah. These are real trails. That's so right. I was, uh, I was having fun. So we were... Trying to find our way out, and that yeah. was uh, quite the adventure. But yeah. yesterday was amazing. Nice weather, great to get in the shade, go for another walk with my girlfriend, and it was just amazing to go see nature, just go listen to it, hear the wind, mm -hmm. hear the birds chirping. It's great. Yeah. I love nature out here. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, those trails are, they're a monster. They're big. They are. <laughs> yeah. And you can get lost for hours in them if you don't know what I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised it's right beside a school. Yeah. Oh, with the but kids. To be honest with you, yeah. Yeah. That's like right. they definitely probably have some somebody looking after the area while there's school going on or something because yeah. those trails are unexpected to what I actually thought. Yeah. Just being in town like they are yeah. and how accessible they are, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Great for Fort Mac to have. What's crazy about those trails is, and it's funny you say that is like the kids because they're so close. Like I grew up in that area by those trails. Okay. And in the winter time, we used to take our GTs there. And I know you don't know what a GT is. But basically, Everyone's gonna be laughing it's at me a, a GT is a winter sled. Okay. So it's got a long seat with two skis on the side. Yeah. Then a steering wheel okay. with like the ski right down the center. Okay. So and basically then, a sled, but with like a steering wheel on it. That's right. Cool so, th oh, dude. And it, it's epic. And they have brakes and stuff. But you were the popular kid if you had one. Yeah. You Here take you take those brakes off and you just, oh. you, you're bombing. Who cares so, about the safety, right? That's right. So we used to take our GTs into the Birchwood Trails. So all those hills and things you were going up, we're going down those things on <laughs> sleds. Unreal. And, oh, dude, it was epic. But we would go in, and, like, I started going to the Birchwood Trails by myself when I was, like, eight. And oh, so man. imagine, like, a group of eight-year-olds going in there, not knowing not where you are. No. And our parents could care less. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's funny too, because when I lived in BC, I lived in Chilliwack, there was yeah. a place we lived on, it was called Promontory Heights. Yeah. And shout out to all the Chilliwack people listening to this. Hopefully yeah. they're listening to this. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool there because we lived on a mountain. And at yeah. the time it was a small community. 
and same thing, grade two to grade four. Like that's so young. That's like yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Yeah. Go on the trails. We were living on the top level, like of the mountain at the time. Okay. So we were the last last street that yeah. you get to. After that, it's all just trees, wildlife, mountains. Yeah. And us kids after school, you know, weekends. Yeah. Go explore. Yeah. Go see what the That's earth it. has to offer. And it was cool to find what we found. And That's right. It was uh, an adventure. And yeah. again, the parents, I don't know, grew, we grew up in different times. That's the right. The parents were like, okay, as long as you're back before it's dark, as long as the street lights are still off, you're still good to be outside. When they get on, you get home. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because I have this, I have a little guy now and he's six and i can't imagine ever letting him just be like okay peace out i'll For see sure. you at five i'm just like that would never happen yeah but that was depending on how old you are that's how you were raised where it was like just go out you know what and another big shout out to my parents if they're listening to this because maybe they didn't know yeah maybe they didn't know what i was doing just going to a friend's house you know yeah just going to to Matt's down yeah. the street. Maybe, right? Air yeah. quotations, maybe. Yeah, maybe going yeah. there. Your parents never knew where you were. Not 100%. No. I like. I, I was, uh, shout out to them. Like, honestly, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Got into some stuff and right. explored and live and learn everything. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. I would tell my mom, <laughs> like, I, I would wake up early and I know I had my best friend, Pero, and we weren't allowed to leave until 8 o'clock. Okay. So like I would literally be up and I'd be waiting by the back door, looking at the <laughs> stove, being like, it's almost eight. And as soon as eight hit, boom, I'm out the door. Oh yeah. And Pero lived one house away and we'd meet on our neighbor's front lawn and be like, what's up? What's up? What's Let's up, get into it. <laughs> and my mom wouldn't see me until dinner time. Absolutely. And she knew I was with Pero, but what me and Pero were doing, <laughs> God knows. Nah, same. And that was a childhood. It was a beautiful thing. But absolutely. Uh, now we're all helicopter parents and... There we go. That ain't happening. So <laughs> I'm not there yet. Yeah. No, well, listen, yeah. take your time. Absolutely. Only when you're I'm ready. enjoying life right now. Only when you're ready. Absolutely. So golf season is still going full swing. You guys are having crazy tournaments. Oh, absolutely. Full swing. Yeah. Full yeah, swing. I didn't mean to do that, but hey. There so we go. yeah, it's golf tournament time for you guys. So oh, what's lots that of big like? tournaments coming up. Yeah, absolutely. A big uh, national tournament coming up is the Mid-Amateur down at the Fort McMurray Golf Club. Okay. Going to be lots of great talent down there. It's a full national event, so guys have caddies. People are spectating now thanks to the COVID restrictions oh, wow. being lifted a little bit. Absolutely. So that's a big tournament. That's a big uh, exposure for our course as well. No doubt. And it's going to be great to work it and be there, be a part of it, just spectate. Just being down at the at the golf course that day yeah. and those uh, those five days actually yeah that's coming up on the uh, the fourteenth fifteenth there so so if somebody wants to go down and be a spectator like well what what's the do you got to pay to come do you just watch like what's that like to be yeah, a spectator come, at that come down and hang out come down to the patio the Baron Buffalo has great great food to offer mm -hmm. and I uh, sit on the patio and watch watch players come down on the eighteenth hole there oh so you see on them on the eighteenth so it's not like on all the holes. Well, I'm thinking for maybe possibly um, we're gonna have to see with the COVID restrictions what oh, we're gonna be allowed to do too. Right, right. Uh, we're gonna probably have some people driving around with golf carts as well. Oh, cool. Maybe probably some spots to be set up for spectators. That's cool. Um, like how you see on TV, right? Yeah. On the sidelines. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, again, full swing if we can do it. I would love. I've never participated in a golf event like that. Like to be as a, a viewer. Yeah. Keep me posted on that. For sure. I would love to come check that out. Come down. Everyone sure. come down and check out our golf course. It's, it's yeah. an awesome vibe. Every every weekend, it's something different down there at the Farber yeah. Murray Golf Club. Yeah, man. So with all these tournaments going on, like we had a, one of the golfers here today that we were filming, and that tournament vibe is completely different from when you just show up and you're just on a foursome going to golf. Absolutely. What's it like for you as somebody who's working there during the tournament? Because... You have these tournaments that are taking place, but you have the regular golfers who are coming. For sure. It's chaotic just to be there. Yeah. Like how like what's that environment like to work in? Yeah, it looks it looks chaotic, but yeah. you know, being in the industry for now four years. Yeah. Uh, coming from a country club before I came up to Fort McMurray, mm -hmm. a lot of tournaments. I don't know, I think it's more of just getting a handle, everyone being a team. Yeah. Coming together, uh, getting your tasks done. Yeah. And everyone just building off of each other too. No, it's not so-and-so do this, so-and-so do that. That's right. It's everyone for the sake of the tournament and the sake of the people playing, yeah. having fun. And then, yeah, we got to realize with 27 holes, when we have 18 holes, 
going for a tournament, we're still going to have some public players and members coming down for nine. Yeah. And that's what makes us so dominant up here in the Fort McMurray area. Yeah. 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 No, it's a big deal having all those uh, different holes to golf on. Like we talked about last time. That's amazing. Like Absolutely. Forward thinkers, whoever were the golf course engineers who put together that idea with the land that you guys have. You did a great job when yeah. you really think about maintaining grass maintaining the creeks getting water to all the holes so making underground the sewage lines making underground sprinkler lines getting the water pumps going it's a great yeah great atmosphere to be a part of and understanding how a golf course operates right and taking the appreciation at 5 36 a.m when you go down there yeah seeing the sunrise seeing the yeah. reflection off the grass seeing the morning dew like as much as it's you know it's kind of gross to see all that it's still cool to see all the wildlife coming together mm -hmm. it's a cool atmosphere is that when you start every day not every day but that's um, but you start at 5 a.m. sometimes the maintenance crew at our golf course will be yeah. down there at 5 5 30 a.m. ready to go Ooh. cutting grass sprinkling yeah. the water well, watering the, the grass and uh yeah getting the bunkers ready because you know everyone likes to go into the bunkers you don't so pay me enough money there. to wake up at 5 30. no yeah. well it was funny <laughs> me and tanner we're a little bit spoiled in when we get to start our day okay um but when we came down to the golf tournament that day i told him like hey man I'll be at your house at nine o'clock to pick you up. And he was just like, okay. And then when we got there, both of us were like, this is kind of early to be starting our day, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> and we were just joking around and we both had to catch ourselves being like, let's keep those thoughts to ourselves. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now they're out right now. Yeah. And now, now everyone knows. Knows it. Yeah. It's okay. Some people like willingly choose to wake up at like six o'clock to go golf. Yeah. So like, I that's don't crazy. Like they, they make their choice. I make my choice to sleep in until right. seven o'clock. Yeah. Like I have to wake up early because of my little man. So like I'm up early, but actually for us to like set up and film and get everything set up, like waking up, we're fortunate. We got to choose. So like, Having to be somewhere that early was unusual for myself and Tanner. Well, thanks for coming down again, yeah, guys. It no was problem. a blast to have you guys there. We really had a good time. The first time we were there, we had a great time. This last time with Dennis's tournament was was awesome. I like. I'm not a. There's no way I I go out of my way never to golf 18. I can pull off a nine. Yeah. My, my attention span isn't there. <laughs> Fair um, enough. But to be in that atmosphere, like a tournament atmosphere, I really do enjoy it. It was it's great. Really cool. Shout out to Brand Connect over there, right? With yep. Dennis, and uh, that was a toolbox. Yeah, the toolbox open. Then he had the fair. The carnival the next yeah, day. Yeah, the following day, back to back. Oh, absolutely. What a blast that yeah. was. That guy's not joking around. He's, no. he's keeping himself very busy. <laughs> and he's making us busy. Yeah, and big shout out to Dennis. He's got Rib Fest coming up. Oh, let's go. I don't know if you've ever been to Rib Fest before, but it I is. There's a big thing down here in oh, Fort or up here in Fort McMurray. Dude, yeah. Dennis puts on Rib Fest, and it, I think it's like four to six different trucks that come. That's what I've heard. From across uh, North America. Yeah. And has some, like, they have some killer barbecue. I've seen some pictures. I've heard some great stories, yeah. and it looks tasty. So, although we're not at the end of the summer yet, we're, we're, we're winding down. A little bit So, here. what's the game plan for you when the golf closes up yeah right now i have a lot of different opportunities i don't know really what to say at the moment okay uh, on my different doors that i have available to me okay um last time we talked you know i was talking about playing hockey that's but, right you know just with a lot of different personal things in life and how i kind of mentioned closely um there i got in a car accident just gonna take some time away from the game honestly mm -hmm. for myself focus on life try and do some different things still okay. gonna go back to school Okay. Um, depending on my different options here, I'll either go for my pilot's license, actually. Oh, cool. That's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And uh, also finish my accounting because it's That's good right. knowledge to have for your own business, absolutely. So when you go to that accounting this year, is it still going to be virtual or do you think you're going to be back into the physical building? 50-50 uh, at the moment right now. Depends okay. on if I want to go back um, yeah. to the same school, which probably I will. Yeah. So then it'll be, it'll be in person. Yeah. And I think also for pilot's license school too and your flight school, you got to be in person as well. Yeah. yeah so yeah. i rather learn in person. So much better have the one-on-one -on -one conversation oh, like this. For sure, man. Right? For sure. So. so Tanner just tapped his phone. That means it's his segment. He's saying, Elliot, give me a turn. So uh, we fit the part of the show. It's called the Max City Minute, as you know. Absolutely. Tanner, this is your segment. Hit him with the Max City Minute. All righty. Question number one. What is one way that Fort McMurray surprised you when it came to food? 
food. You know what? <laughs> I work at the place Baron Buffalo. Yeah. That place for a golf course mm-hmm. honestly blew my mind. You know, a lot of golf courses, they have restaurants. Mm-hmm. But that blew my mind to honestly have a golf course with 27 holes. Like, I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, get the opportunity to work there, and I still am. Yeah. And honestly, too, the culture up here. It, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest shock to me coming up here. Yeah. Being an Albertan boy, you learn all the different things about Fort Mac, and it used to be smaller back then, and now it's, it's grown monster. amazingly. Yeah. The food at that place is uh, off the chain. Yeah. I, there got lots of great things to say about Fort Mac. I'm very fortunate to live here. Yeah. Question number two. What is the best event you've been a part of since you've gotten to Fort McMurray? Well, due to COVID, again, I'm going back to the golf course. All our tournaments, man. Yeah. Those are so fun to be a part of. If you get a chance to buy yourself a, a ticket for any kind of raffle that we have down there, any 50-50, even if you're just playing in some little Bonnie and Clyde tournament, you can win some great prizes and just the atmosphere of the events after what we put on. Yeah. It's it's just great. Like yeah. That's what I've been doing basically because of the COVID the past little bit. Yeah. Just been... Working at the golf course, living at the golf course, and playing at the golf course. Yeah. It's a great atmosphere down there. That's awesome. Question number three. Uh, what is one thing that you can experience at a Fort McMurray golf course that you can't anywhere else? The wildlife. The foxes, the bears, the deers. That's amazing. Or fine. Or fine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see it all the time, so I'm pretty like comfortable with it, but... You can't be too comfortable with them because then yeah. you don't want them to come up to you and be friendly with you. You're yeah. still a wild animal. Yeah. But it's very cool down how much wildlife you get to see and be, yeah. a, be around. That yeah. you don't get anywhere else. Really? No. That's a cool experience that I think Fort McMurray has to offer. Hmm. Question number four. What is one thing about working at a golf course people wouldn't expect you have to do? Ooh, that's a good one. I think basically... You go to the golf course um, and you work your way up in the in the business and it's pretty cool the different jobs you can do. So I think what you really got to give shout out to is the maintenance crew. People don't give enough credit to how much hours those guys put in. Yeah. They get up there early in the morning because they want those greens to be in mint condition. And I think it's also like the amount of people it takes to really run the place between the restaurant, between getting all the carts washed, set up for people getting members' bags pulled up and ready to go for when they show up, right, mm-hmm. on time. So I think it's more of a lot of the appreciation goes into behind the scenes of everyone who works there. Yeah. It's not just show up and go whack the ball down the course. Yeah. Well, two hours before you got there, three hours before you got there, someone else is making sure that grass was cut and looking yeah. fresh for you. Yeah, man. And your final question, what is one opportunity you didn't expect to get in Fort McMurray? Didn't get, hey, what I got and I wasn't expecting. Yes. No. Well, Tanner hits him with the hard questions. That is, that stumped me. And you know what? I'm very fortunate again to just be where I am, where I'm working. Yeah. Like, just, I didn't grow up here. I didn't know anybody up here. Mm-hmm. And my my bosses, I can't be more pleased with what they've, what they've offered me up here. Yeah. It's been awesome, honestly. That A is. lot of great things, man. Yeah. Like, this place is great. Like, Growing up in Alberta, you always hear about it's. It was a tough track to get up here before. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, yeah. the highways have upgraded. The right. town has upgraded. People have started to learn more culture up here. It's a great time. Yeah. So honestly, I was very fortunate to uh, come out of school and uh, get a pretty good uh, paying job for a summer student and also be able to uh, still enjoy my summer at the same time. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And those have been your five questions. Yeah, the wildlife at the golf course. That's... Uh that's not my bag. No. <laughs> no. Wildlife, like, I, I grew up here, and so I'm accustomed to seeing it. But uh, a fox here and there, they're cute. They're like, okay. Yeah. But then when those bears start to come out. Unbearable. Like, unbearable. Thank unbearable. you. <laughs> zing, zing. Um, yeah, I was at your golf course right before COVID happened. Like, whatever season, that, not whatever season it was, I don't remember. And I was in a golf cart, and a bear was there. And the person oh, I was with was like, let's go see the bear. I was like, what are you doing? Whoa. We started like <laughs> going towards the bear, and I was like, "You don't go towards bears." No. And then like the bear was like galloping away, but then kind of like stopped and like and turned around. And I was like, "Boot it!" And then were anyways, you with a white person? I was. Yeah, that sounds like a white person thing. They wanted yep. to fight Yogi, hey? Yep. Yeah. And so uh, I, I made that exact comment, Tanner. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I have a very good respect for 
wildlife. And so yeah. it's one of those things where, yeah, I don't, they're nice to see from afar. But yeah, I think up. when it comes to the bear situation, you know, yeah. yeah, the bears, you could, don't need to get close to yeah, them. I could do without. Yeah. I mean, they're cool at the same time. Yeah. I think it's just it's part of nature. When you roll up on like, like you go grab your ball and then out of nowhere, a bear just comes across the fairway. Yeah. Like you're not expecting it at all. Yeah. And seeing how big some of the wildlife can get right. to. Right. Like, we have a small bear at the golf course that wanders from time to time, but last year we had a pretty big bear yeah. that honestly disturbed us a little bit. We yeah. also had some beavers, too, come through the creeks. Mm. Yeah. There's been some great wildlife down there. It's, yeah. been, it's been cool. That's awesome. All right, man, that's the end of the 20 minutes. It flies. I think we does. probably went over a little bit, but that's okay. Okay. But uh, this is part of the show where you get a shameless shout-out. So it's all you. Well, I'll give a uh, shout-out always to my girlfriend, Jana Dixon, always coming up here with me. Gotta love her. Um, also, shout out to two homies I missed out last time. Lucas and uh, Christopher there. Christopher Columbus is his nickname. Nice. Uh, yeah, he's my boy from Germany. So, uh, yeah, shout out to those two guys. And then, honestly, just shout out to my family, my grandparents, my sister, you know, my parents, everyone, you know. Just just thankful to be here, honestly. And thank you guys for having me on the show. You're more than welcome, man. Before you take off again, definitely, you got to come back and do it again. Okay, deal. Hey, there we go. Oh, my word. <laughs> Awesome. Well, for McMurray with Buffalo and the rest of the world, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the Max City Morning Show. I hope you're having a great day, and uh, it truly does mean the world to me that you tuned in, so thank you. On that note, we'll see you tomorrow.